today because we need to move on to applications of integration. Um, the green boxes make it feel like we have a bunch of new rules, but I'm hoping you can sort of see where those rules come from. For example, if you have e to the ax plus b plus c, e to the ax plus b, and if you were going to differentiate that, you know that it would throw out an a by the chain rule. So therefore, if we're integrating something that looks like this, we have to effectively counteract that a by putting a 1 on a down here. So each of these rules is essentially rules that we've seen before, but this time having a little linear inside each of them. Note, why would this be very different with a 2 there? Because you have like an x. Yeah, because the chain rule, if we were going to differentiate this, the chain rule would throw out 2axe to the ax plus b. The thing is, if we were going to differentiate this, it would use product rule. So there's no way to counteract that smoothly because the derivative of this gets much more complex. So these integrals, while the title is more complicated integrals, they're only a very little bit more complicated. With that one there, would it be e to the ax squared plus b, or do you take the... As in if we were going to integrate this? No, I mean, the one you just derived. Oh, if we are going to integrate that. No, um, it said you derived it and you derived it to 2ax e to the ax plus b. It should be squared. Yeah, okay. yeah, by that. yeah it should be squared. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, let's do a few examples on here. If we were integrating this one here, the integral of 3x take 5 to the 4, that will have come from a power of 5. So we're expecting it to have come from a 3x take 5 to the power of 5. And if we were to differentiate this by the chain rule, we would throw out a 3. So in this case, we need to counteract that 3 by putting a third at the front. And remembering, because we're integrating, to end with a plus c. So the solution for that is this. Isn't it 1 over 15? Yeah, 1 over 5. No? Should have yeah. 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 been the five. Yeah. Five would drop down. No, no, one over three. Oh. Five over five? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Get mental. Yeah. yeah. You need the fifth to the power, the power, and the three for the chain rule. Probably, yeah. <laughs> this one was worse. Yeah. Way worse. All right, the next one. Integral of the sine of 4x take 2 dx. Where would the sine have come from? Negative cos. Good, a negative cos. And if we're going to differentiate negative cos 4x take 2, then that will have thrown a 4, so it lives here as a quarter. You still need the negative and you need the plus C, and you can always check by differentiating it back. All right, one more example, and then we move on. The integral of e to the 2x take 3 dx. It will have come from a 2x take 3, and we need a half out the front, plus C. So, nothing too bad or revolutionary. Did you, yes? Would you reckon they them properly or can you just plug it in the formula? If they're looking like this, into the formula, yeah. in reality, you might get them looking like this or this in the first question of the SAT. Yeah. Or the first question of the exam. After that, you're not going to get them as easy. Okay. Basically. <laughs> um, did you guys want a minute to practice this? Or should we just move straight on? You will have to practice it eventually, but I reckon move on. So, given we've learned how 
to integrate. The question is, why is it useful? How's the basketball? Good. Shout it now. Are we doing it? Yeah, we are. Um, do what? No, no, we're not. Sorry, we're doing air under curve. Alrighty. So, this is a bit where we talk through the logic of it. Integration is useful for a couple of purposes. Geometrically, when we calculate derivative, we get the slope. Integration on a curve gives us an area, an area under a curve. And effectively, you remember how we remember how we learnt first principles. So we worked out rise over run and then did limits to find first principles. Sace wants you to know the first principles of finding area under a curve, which basically involves of let's pretend we don't know how to integrate, how do we find the area under a curve without integrating? It's a bit like saying, let's pretend we don't know how to differentiate, how do we find the slope of a function without differentiating? You use first principles. In this case, we use rectangles. So, let's say we have the curve x squared plus one. That is a quadratic curve going through here at one, but we're only interested in between zero and two. So we want to find that area exactly. If we were to find that area exactly, we could use rectangles. This is called the upper sum. And what they've done is they've taken the right hand side, 0.51, or 1.52, and substituted it into the function. So it's f of 1.5, f of 1, f of 1.5, f of 2, so it's 0.5. And that gives them the height, and for each of those, they multiply by the width. So the area of each of these rectangles is the width, which is the half, times the height. The width times the height, width times the height, width times the height. And that gives you the area of those four rectangles. Now clearly, those four rectangles are bigger than the area of the curve. So what we're looking at here is two estimates. That's an overestimate. Overestimate is called the upper sum. It's when we deliberately pick rectangles that are too big. So, overestimate. And then you probably guess where this is going. There's an underestimate, or a lower sum. In this case here, they're picking the value on the, right, the left-hand side of each rectangle. So rather than picking, saying this rectangle is two and goes across like that, it's 1.5 and across like that. And depending on whether your function is increasing or decreasing, you'll need to decide which side to pick the rectangles on. And you'll get more practice for this in practice sats and from the revision online, but the textbook doesn't give you a lot of practice. In this case here, it's the same sort of logic. Width times height. So it's width times height here, summing in zero. Then width times height, etc., 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 getting you this. And at the end of this whole process, using four rectangles, what we can say is that the true area is somewhere between those two estimates. We had an upper estimate and a lower estimate, and the true value is in between them. What comes next is a sort of squeeze theory. Like, how do we get a narrower band for this? How do we get a better estimate? And SAIS expects you to know, at least theoretically, how to get a better estimate. Any idea how to get a better estimate? Yes? Make the rectangles skinnier. Good, more rectangles. <laughs> so, here we go with skinnier rectangles. You can see that with the fat rectangles, they miss quite a bit. There's big chunks missing, it's not going super well. As you add more rectangles, or make them skinnier, you can see the estimate gets incredibly good. And this is how your calculator does it with tiny rectangles. It's a good way to do it. The other thing you can do, is you can average the upper and lower sums, get a middle value, or use the midpoints. So rather than using the left-hand side and the right-hand side, you can use the midpoint of each one for the height, and you can see how this gives us a bit over and a bit under, a bit over and a bit under, a bit over and a bit under. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. 
It's a better estimate. So the best answer is more rectangles. Also acceptable answer is using the midpoint of each rectangle will give you a better estimate. Yes? I've got a question. So yeah. for the upper sum, you don't do f of zero, but for the lower sum, you do it. Is there a reason for that? Yeah, it's a good question. So I guess we're, we're only using four rectangles. And so therefore, we're asking to find an upper sum, we need to find like four heights. If we did it here at zero, the height would be under. And then here, the height would be under. So the four heights we choose are the four right-hand edges of the rectangle. So 0 0.5, 1, 1, 1 0.5, 2. But if we want a lower sum, you do the left-hand left side. But it won't always be that case. Like It won't always be the left-hand side, because if the function was going down like this, the left-hand side actually gives you an upper estimate. Okay. So don't think of it just off this diagram as left hand side under, because sometimes in the equation function goes down, left hand side will give you an overestimate. Okay. Um, and we'll do that in an example in a second. Is that a question, Adam? Uh, no. Cool. All right. Now your textbook does something very strange. It pretends you have the software to do this with lots and lots and lots of rectangles. 4, 10, 25, 50 rectangles. However, in SACE, they don't expect you to use this software, and the examiners have said the maximum you'll be asked to do is six rectangles. So I don't have much interest in you guys calculating 25 or 50 rectangles. It's neat to see it approach a certain value, like here's the average of the upper and lower, and you can today, today see where we need to move on to the applications going, but there's no um, um, The green boxes make it feel like so we have a you rules. come across questions. But I'm hoping you can sort of see where those rules come from. from. We're not going to be on For six. example, if you have E to the AX plus B plus C, E to the AX plus B, and if you were going to consider the area differentiate, y equals you know that it's and the x throw out in A from x equals two to x equals four. So therefore, if we're integrating something that looks like this, we have to effectively counteract. I've done four. That you want to do by putting up one on A down here. Cool. So each of these rules is essentially rules we've seen before. You guys are going to regret this about thirty seconds. All right, we're doing six. <laughs> and then I estimate the area, the area upper and lower rectangles. With the All right, there. first step here is a sketch of the graph. Yeah, because the chain, if we were going to do and I would only ever do the chain of the sketch of the graph. Go out to Does the anyone happen to sort of visualize what one on X looks like in their head? The thing is, if we were going to differentiate like this, this, it would use product rule. So there's no way to counteract that smoothly because the derivative of this gets much more compact here as well. So these integrals, while well, the title is more complicated, I guess the reason it does a very little bit more complicated. Because if you put in x equals say 0.1, 1, one, one divided by 0 0.1 is 10. X is like as in if we were going to integrate this, you go into a thousand times. Over uh, here, if you're only really interested in between two. And, four. and yes, I've drawn it terribly, but it should be squared. We are looking for the area under the curve um, between 